always in life you have before you three choices. You may allow your uncontrolled thoughts to create the moment. You may allow the collective consciousness to create the moment. Or you may allow your creative consciousness to create the moment. And I cannot overemphasize the importance of the company you keep. For what you imagine, you experience. Your life is a reflection of what you desire and what you believe you may have, no matter how much you deserve it. Believing you cannot have something is the same thing as not having it. You will always be given the experience you believe you will be given. It is for this that God seeks to prove itself to no one. For God has no need to do that. God is, and that is what is so. Those who know themselves to be one with God or have the experience of God within have no need, nor do they seek to prove that to anyone, least of all themselves. And so it was that when they taunted him, saying, If you are the Son of God, come down from that cross. The man called Jesus did nothing. Yet three days later, Quietly and unobtrusively, when there were no witnesses and no crowds and no one to whom to prove anything, he did something a great deal more astonishing, and the world has been talking about it ever since. And in this miracle is found your salvation. For you have been shown the truth, not only of Jesus, but of who you are. And you may be saved from the lie about yourself, which you have been told, which you have accepted as your truth. God invites you always to your highest thought about yourself. There are those on your planet now who have manifested many of these higher thoughts, including causing physical objects to appear and disappear, making themselves appear and disappear, even living forever in the body or coming back to the body and living again. And all of this, all of this has been made possible because of their faith, because of their knowing, because of their immutable clarity about how things are and how they are meant to be. And while in the past, whenever people in earthly form have done these things, you have called the events miracles and have made the people to be saints and saviors. Yet they are no more saints and saviors than you, for you are all saints and saviors which is the very message they have been bringing you. Whatever you choose for yourself, give another. In giving, what you say is, I see you. And what you see in another, you can begin to see in yourself. It is the outward evidence of your inner reality. It is the outward proof of your inner truth, the truth of your being. And so I send you new teachers, more teachers, all with the same message as the teachers of old. This is their message, that God stays hidden from no one, but speaks to everyone, even the least worthy among us. For if God will speak to me, God will speak directly to the heart of every man, woman, and child who seeks the truth. There is thus hope for all of us. None of us is so horrible that God would forsake us, nor so unforgivable that God would turn away. Yet I tell you this. You are worthy, as is everyone else. You have based your sense of worthiness on the past, while I base your worthiness on the future. The future, yes, the future, always the future. That is where your life is, not in the past, the future. That is where your truth is, not in the past. What you have done is unimportant compared to what you were about to do. How you have erred is insignificant compared to how you are about to create. In truth, I do not forgive you and will not forgive you for anything, ever. I do not have to. There is nothing to forgive. But I can release you and I do now, once again, as I have done so often in the past, through the teachings of so many other teachers. You understand the logic behind the truth that I do not condemn. Nor shall I punish, nor have I a need to seek retribution. I have no such need. For I have not been and cannot be offended or damaged in any way 
The same is true of you and all others. But stick to your beliefs if that serves you. Hold tight. Do not waver. For your ideas about right and wrong are your definitions of who you are. Yet do not require that others define themselves according to your terms. And do not stay so stuck in your present beliefs and customs that you halt the process of evolution itself. For life goes on with you or without you. Nothing stays the same, nor can anything remain unchanged. To be unchanged is to not move, and to not move is to die, which is impossible. All life is in motion. Even rocks are filled with motion. Everything moves. Everything. Therefore, by the very fact of motion, nothing is the same from one moment to the next. Nothing. Remaining the same or seeking to moves against the laws of life. And this is foolish. So change. Yes, change. Change your ideas of right and wrong. Change your notions of this and that. Change your structures and your constructions, your models and your theories. Allow your deepest truths to be altered. Alter them to yourself for goodness' sake. Because your new idea of who you are is where the growth is. Your new idea of what is so is where evolution accelerates. Your new idea of the who, what, where, when, how, and why of it is where the mystery gets solved. The plot unravels. The story ends. And then you can begin a new story, a grander one. Your new idea about all of it is where the excitement is, where the creation is, where the God in you is made manifest and becomes fully realized. No matter how good you think things have been, they can be better. No matter how wonderful you think your theologies, your ideologies, your cosmologies, they can be full of even more wonder. For there are more things in heaven and earth than have ever been dreamt of. So be open. Therefore, be open. Don't close off the possibility of new truth because you have been comfortable with an old one. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Yet be not quick to judge another. Rather, seek to avoid judgment. For another person's wrongs were your rights of yestermorn. Another person's mistakes are your own past actions now corrected. Another person's choices and decisions are as hurtful and harmful, as selfish and unforgivable as many of your own have been. It is when you just can't imagine how another person could do such a thing that you have forgotten where you came from and where both you and the other person are going. And to those of you who think yourselves to be the evil ones, who think yourselves to be unworthy and irredeemable, I tell you this. There is not a one among you who is lost forever, nor will there ever be. For you are all in the process of becoming. You are all moving through the experience of evolution. That is what I am up to through you. Go then and give it. Seek to make everyone whose life you touch feel worthy. Give everyone a sense of their own worthiness as a person, a sense of true wonder of who they are. Give this gift and you will heal the world. You may have at all times whatever experience you desire. I tell you this, many have there been who have been raised from the dead. Many have there been who have come back to life. It's happening every day right now in your hospitals. Nothing in this universe occurs by accident, nor is there any such thing as coincidence. Nothing exists separate from you, and everything is your own creation. Even your apparent lack of understanding is your own creation. It is literally a figment of your imagination. You imagine you do not know the answer, and so you do not. Yet as soon as you imagine that you do, then you do. So to keep remembering, act out your knowingness in every moment. Keep acting on what you know, rather than what the world of illusion is showing you. Stay with it, no matter how deceiving appearances are. This is what all masters have done and do. They judge not by appearances, but act according to what they know. Or cause another to remember. Whatever you choose for yourself, give to another. Because myself and the other are one. What I have given to another, I have given to myself. 
We are on an eternal journey to nowhere. That is the greatest truth. There is nowhere to go, nothing to do, and no one you have to be except exactly who you're being now. The truth is that there is no journey. You are right now where you are attempting to go. You are right now who you are attempting to be. It is the master who knows this and thus ends the struggle. This message is like a spring. When it is coiled, it circles back onto itself. One circle covers the other, and it seems to be literally going around in circles. Only when the spring is uncoiled will you see that it stretches out in a spiral farther than you could have imagined. When you are finished with this message, you should be able to repeat its essential points virtually verbatim. The day may come when you may wish to. All of it happened. All of it has already happened. Every possibility exists as fact, as completed events. Just wait till you see the technology of the universe. This is the cosmic wheel. All the endings already exist. The universe is just waiting to see which one you choose this time. And when the game is over, whether you win, lose, or draw, the universe will say, want to play it again? Your universe does not care whether you win or not, and you can't hurt its feelings. It just offers you a chance to play again. All the endings already exist, and which ending you experience depends on the choices you make. Everything is happening at once. Again, all that has ever happened is happening now, and ever will happen exists right now. So if you think it would be interesting for the doomsday prediction of the psychics to come true, focus all your attentions on that, and you can draw that to yourself. And if you think you would like to experience a different reality, focus on that. And that is the outcome you can draw to you. This much anybody can tell you. If you are not careful, you will get exactly where you're going. If therefore you don't like the way you are headed, change direction. Go inside. Search your place of inner wisdom. See what this calls on you to do. Then do it. Most important of all, do not be afraid. You cannot die in any event. So there is nothing to be afraid of. Be aware of the process unfolding and quietly know that everything is going to be okay with you. Seek to get in touch with the perfection of all things. Know that you will be exactly where you have to be in order to experience exactly what you choose as you go about creating who you really are. This is the way to peace in all things. See the perfection. Finally, don't try to get out of anything. What you resist persists. And celebrate. Celebrate life. Celebrate self. Celebrate the predictions. Celebrate God. Celebrate and play the game. Bring joy to the moment, whatever the moment seems to bring, because joy is who you are and who you will always be. God cannot create anything imperfect. If you think that God can create anything imperfect, then you know nothing of God. So celebrate. Celebrate the perfection. Smile and celebrate and see only the perfection. And that which others call the imperfection will not touch you in any way which is imperfect for you. Face the future fearlessly, understanding the process and seeing the perfection of all of it. That peace and that serenity, that calmness will lead you away from most of the experiences and outcomes others would have called negative. 